Hey there, everybody. How you doing? I am Francis, and welcome back to Quartz Party Blood Drive. Last episode, we finished the main game, but as you guys know, we are not exactly done yet. During our adventure, we have unlocked these extra chapters, and today, well, today we're going to start going through these extra chapters. So we have seven of them, and I don't know if they're going to be like short, like uh, the in the original Quartz Party, if these are going to be a bit longer. So, either this is going to be one video or one or a couple of videos, we'll, we'll see. But we'll begin with extra chapter one, because where else do you start, right? The last waltz. Alright. Oh, it's a more seek story. O okay. And apparently we're in the woods. Ugh. So cold. Gah, gah. My entire body. It hurts. That's right, I... I couldn't move a muscle on my body. It's as if I were paralyzed. I tried to focus my strength into my arms to wake them up, but... <coughs> my left arm seems to be broken. <coughs> the areas in the most pain are my left arm and the left side of my head. My shoulder seems to have taken some of the brunt as well. I lay on my stomach and turn my neck. The one muscle still mobile for me. The sea and immediate environment full of broken branches and crushed leaves. Oh. Looks like I got caught on some branches and... <laughs> my ribs may be broken as well. What an ungrateful sight I must be. And early hopeless to boot. I mustn't allow Mayu to see me in such a state. Mayu? Please, don't look for me. Stop staring at my ins- Oh, so this is what happened to uh, Morishi after he found out that he was uh, looking at Mayu. So I'm guessing he jumped out a window then since he's outside, you know. So we're seeing Morishi's final moments. Stop staring at my insides. Shig, please. <laughs> that mournful voice playing on my phone. So clearly Mayus. I just couldn't get the sound of it out of my ears. It haunted my every thought and shook me to my core. Sorrow and anger. Hatred and remorse. My head was flooded with wave upon wave of emotion. I allowed my own morbid curiosity to get the better of me. Using it as justification to disrespect or even discreet the corpses of countless unfortunate victims in this school. What a beautiful specimen. She sparkles so perfectly in the dim light. Inners right with the red. Here that bellies the finality of the situation. Appearing passionate and alive and her insides are so thin and twisted are you embarrassed to show me what lies beneath your skin my nameless angel <laughs> i shall preserve this perfection on my phone for all eternity for you are truly so unsightly i can't help but gaze upon you one corpse more than any other caught my eye however and this one wasn't just some nameless person i never known in life as I initially assumed. She was a friend whom I cherished as I would a sister. She was the light that had kept me moving forward in this dark space. She was Mayu Suzumoto, but now she was a stain. Her light had been snuffed, leaving only darkness in my heart. <coughs> Mayu! Mayu! <coughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mayu. I was... I was... Ah! I cried with every last bit of my soul, penetrating the ugliness of my own physical form as I lay there, bruised and broken and covered in my own vomit. The pugin stench of bile filled my nose. Mayu... Mayu... The tears kept on streaming. I was sobbing so hard. 
and through possibly broken ribs no less, that my airways had backed up, causing me to break out into fits of coughing. A sudden gust of wind shook the leaves on the trees around me, turning my body and soul and filling my ears with the sound of rustling leaves. Huh? My head hurts. I feel sick. <clears throat> I had to move. I knew that if I didn't, I would wither and die here. Besmirched by my blood and contents of my own stomach. I attempted to stand, but the pain was disheartening. Oh! Blessed it! Ah! I balanced myself on my right arm and, with excruciating effort, was able to forcefully climb back to my feet. I put my hand on a nearest tree, using it as a crutch with which to support my weight as I relearned the mere art of remaining upright under these new physical restrictions. Glancing back toward the school, I noticed a rusty tub next to the wall. It was full of water from the near constant rain. <clears throat> Every step I took brought with it a new and more intense pain, but I took these steps nonetheless, approaching the tub slowly and methodically. Well, we know you don't want to be out in this rain for too long. We saw what happened to Shimada, I think his name was. The guy with the red hair. The guy I hated in uh, the final chapter of Blood Drive. I squatted in front of it and pulled my face close to the water's surface. Cupping some rainwater in my right hand, I splashed my face, attempting to wash up as best as I could. <sighs> Another gust of wind shook the tree branches, but this time brought with it a gift. A large plastic bag which somehow found its way to my foot and got itself caught thereupon. I stared at it for a time, pondering what party favor fate had brought me, but ultimately chose to keep it on my person as a painstakingly made my way back to the school building. Okay, you're not going to kill yourself with the bag, are you? I entered through the connecting corridor between the main building and its annex and resumed my wandering through the dark empty halls. The only sound I could hear was that of my own footfalls. From whence does this foul odor emanate? It's not from all corners of this place. I think it's from you, buddy. You said you're like uh, drenched in your own blood. Or not blood, your own vomit. And just how many living, breathing human beings remain within its walls? Mishida, Kishinama, Nakashima, Shinohara, Crash Rep, Miss Yoi, and Mishida's sister. I haven't seen any of them for quite a time now. Well, you terrified, uh, Yuka. Have they all perished? Um, three of them have. Well, two of them have. You already know about Mayu, and you do follow suit. Am I the sole survivor? It is an unreasonable prosperation. Surviving in a place like this requires no amount of determination. I peered into a random classroom through its broken door, and the first thing I saw was a hefty stack of corpses. Each wearing a Sarah style school uniform. Bodies here as well. I don't recall them before. Such an odd space this is. Devoid of day and night alike. It's as if time has stopped. Though it clearly hasn't. Well, you're not too far from the truth. You are in, uh, closed spaces, uh, held together by spiritual entities. Um, basically time does flow here, but not normally. So you're not too far from the truth. Corpses decompose here as anywhere else, eventually turning to bone. This truly is a wretched place. Perhaps I'll be among the running masses tomorrow. As I walked along the old, rundown halls, a scene not unlike rusted steel began to grace my nose, growing stronger and stronger as I approached my destination. And then, there I was. The point where the hall formed an S-shape. And there it was. An unmatched sight that would turn an ordinary man's stomach. Fortunately, mine had already been turned. Twisted and thoroughly emptied. Freeing me to enjoy the view. Ah, uh, it's Mayu again. <sighs> Sorry I'm late. I've come to pick you up, Mayu. I knelt before the splattered chunks of human flesh on a wall. 
As if in Revergence, an open a large plastic bag, fate had be quenched me. Oh no. You're going to take what's left of Mayu with you? Oh god. I don't think Mayu wants this. There you are, she. What on earth kept you? I wasn't the only one waiting, you know. Teach wanted to see you perform too. It's like I said earlier. Your acting is always so dazzling in full of life. Whether I'm standing right next to you or watching from afar. <laughs> you flatter me. Not at all. I just don't want you to miss your big chance, you know? I'm sure there's a lot of crap to deal with, but... Well, I just think there's an equal amount of good that could come of it too, you know? And it wouldn't just be for you, but for those of us who feel ener energized when they see you act. Like me! So, come on, let's go. I know you can do it. When I was young, I was highly prone to sickness, which resulted in me spending an inordinate amount of time home alone. My parents were so busy, they rarely ever had time for me. So I learned that when I know my expectations aren't to be met, I'm better off expecting nothing from the very start. This guiding philosophy made it easier for me to cope with the time I was forced to spend by myself. And ultimately, I came to prefer my own company, willfully looking myself away, or locking myself away. Generally, when one's child behaves in such a manner, a responsible parent would exhibit some sign of worry, no? But mine did not. My father is a doctor, so his time at home was always at a premium. And in the rare instances we would talk, he would only ask questions of me, as if I were just another of his patients. To me, he was less a father and more a physician. I rarely spoke, and I never smiled. And this terrified my mother, whose interactions with me were always tentative and hesitant. As if she were dealing with some rare disease. Okay, I'm starting to understand why you're not right in the head, my dude. This environment shaped me into the person I am. A person distrustful of his own parents. The only family member in whom I had full confidence was my grandfather. But after he passed away, I had no one. I withdrew completely. Until I met Mayu. If I hadn't met her... I may never have known the joys of acting, or life in general. Let's be together forevermore, Mayu. You should be all here now, right? Hmm. Wait. It's not here. Where could it be? Mayu, your hairpin is missing. Didn't uh, Sachiko take that? I'm pretty sure in a uh, book in a uh, book of shadows, Sachiko took the hairpin after the children ripped her apart. Where is it? Where did it go? I frantically searched the immediate area, but I couldn't find it anywhere. Did someone take it? Blast! I'm sorry, Mayu. I know it must be somewhere around here. I'll find it for you, I swear. Oh boy. Oh boy, not you again. I'm beginning to think. I'm the only person still alive in here. It hurts! It hurts! I don't want to die! I don't want to die! Help! Help me! <laughs> Why me? I did nothing wrong! Again? Die! Everybody just die! <laughs> Damn it! It's your fault! It's all your fault! The hell it is! You're the one to blame! Everything's all your fault! Mommy, I can't stop the bleeding. I can't stop it. You're the one who climbed up here just because you could. This isn't anyone's fault. I mean, you climbed it too. But we fell because you pulled me. You're the one who pulled. Nah, nah. Uh, oh boy. <laughs> Children, in reality, are merciless creatures consumed with greed. The way they react when they've been cornered is what truly fascinates me. Well, that is probably the most creepiest thing I ever heard. And this guy's been known to say a lot of creepy things. But those who have died and possess no physical body anymore are nothing more than balls of pure malice and regret. 
Unsightly and best avoid it. When the spark of life is attached to a body, only then is it able to shine its brightest and appear its most beautiful. I simply have no time for the dead. As I approached the auditorium, I heard a voice echoing from within. Is someone there? I looked inside and saw a young man standing on a stage, wearing the uniform of a different school. He held a plastic bag in his hand which seemed to be standing in for a co-star. Ah, uh, he found more Sheik. Wow, that's kind of creepy. This might be Northern Powis, I do vow. It's instant glow, a lighting on thy cheeks. For you, my deepest feelings to opine. My heart and soul cast at your worthy feet. T'was at the masquerade, our love did bloom. Without reserve and faceless in our guise. And none our families quarrel, but my fate is to be drowned deep in thy endless eyes. So song to song we danced. Our warm embrace shook loose the last resistance of our heart. And when our lips exchanged the softest brush, it were a dream surpassing all man's art. Regret I bear for parting there with thee, when all my instant was to steal away. Beneath light's cover, tarnishing our names, what need have we of names come break of day? This mad desire that burns within my heart, eternally full fit it seems to burst. Perhaps it burst long past, and now I stare upon thee with the eyes of one unmade. O oh, Quats, I fly to thee this very night. Yet in my flight perhaps thou were dismayed. The stars in the high seats burn bright this night. As though the future twinks as now to tell. My heart is restless, stricken with such terror. As visions of our failure might impart. Thou art my greatest love. As blues the sky, yet fate grips me, and die to drive apart. Wherefore cannot we meet as lovers meet? Wherefore dost thou our hearts refuse to cross? Answers, I implore you stars above, why torment thou a soul with heart hard loss? Her hands, her feet, her lips, her being in whole is perfect, Eden sculpted by God's hand. The leery the lily's purity, expose, lay bare that predators may force their way within. To call myself a guardian, to possess another, as my own desire demands? Call it falsity, or what thou wilt, for all else I may be. I'm first a man, and as a man, descend from Adam's kin. This impure flame is kindled here within. At last her smile was once enough to sate, these demons howling, crawling at my breast. But dare we grow these feelings, and those smiles, which once could soothe me, now confer no rest. What match is there for touch, for talk, for taste, to soak thee in like venom through the skin? If sorrow hangs thee, I'll attend thy side, to lift thee up. Is wishing such a sin? I love thee, even if it were from afar, or if all men deride me with contempt. If be my hands corrupt, I'll chop them off. If my tongue corrupt, I'll scoop it out. Uh, seeing the kind of place you are and how they like to rip out tongues, uh, I think the, they'll do it for you, don't worry about that. If my eyes should defile you, out they come. All sense is not. If thou departs from me, on bended knee I beg of thee to spurn, all others who will court you, turn in turn. If not, I pray thee one last favor grant, and now my lips once more to, to touch thy hand. Up oh, and there he is watching. The man slowly paints like knee dropped to one knee, as he suggested he would. He began drawing his lips toward the plastic bag. Until it made him realize he had an audience. <gasps> Who's there? Th th that would be me. Not a bad performance. I had no idea you were such a skilled bard. You're... Yikazami, was it? 
You remembered my name. I'm flattered. I never imagined we truly would meet again, however. I suppose those of like mine have a certain bond in here. Don't lump me in with you. I'm not like you at all. Oh? Your knife. It has blood on it. Oh my. I forgot all about that. Ah, uh, that's right. Your interests lie in taking photos of the dead with your phone, don't they? Sakutaro Morishi from Kiss Rugby Academy High School, if I'm not mistaken. Huh? I see, so you were watching me after all. Far be it for me to criticize your pastime. Getting excited by the sight of corpses is certainly unique. Hmm. Well, I suppose there's no harm in you knowing. Taboos don't exist in a twisted land such as this. Very true. It's up to each of us how best to use the time we have left in here. And you've chosen to run around killing people with yours. Oh, come now. You speak as if I'm some kind of serial killer. I mean, you kind of are. But I only kill those who catch my interest. A rose by any R name. I'm sure those who caught your interest thus far would have no quorums calling you what you are. Heh. <laughs> you speak as if this doesn't concern you. I see. Am I a person of interest then? For your amusements? Let's just say you're a contender. You know, the state Morshig is in, I don't think he really cares too much if you kill him. Since all he wants is to be with Mayu again. In which I'm thinking that's where this is going. I'm not the only one killing people, you know. And in the end, there's no difference whether you're killed by the living or the dead. Is there? In fact, I suspect being killed by the dead is a far more brutal experience. Consider, for example, the girl who wore this hairpin in life. Ah, you found me use a hairpin. Uh, that's... Hmm. Don't tell me you knew her. Yeah, I, I, I did. She's uh, in, in the bag I'm holding. Would you give that to me? Ah, so this is a memento of the girl you love. No. Then why do you want it? Because it is hers. B because Because Come on. Why should I borrow explain myself to you? I must have struck a nerve as I was suddenly being attacked. Not that he was particularly good at it though. I had no trouble at all dodging. Huh? <laughs> Watch it now. I wouldn't lunge at a man with a knife if I were you. He makes a good point there, yeah. <laughs> I tossed the hairpin across the room, then grabbed Morrissey's right arm and began twisting it. it let go! That, that really hurts! But if I let you go, you're just going to attack me again, aren't you? Shut the hell up! Just let go of me! And why would I want to do that exactly? My prey has been caught. It would be such a waste if I were simply to open a trap and return it to the wild so soon. I placed the knife against his cheek. Uh -oh. Answer my question. The owner of that hairpin. What is your relation to her? I love her with all my heart, okay, you sick son of a bitch? Why do I have to answer a question like that? Um, I think the fact that you have a knife up to your cheek is reason enough. <laughs> don't get smart with me. I don't like smart. Oh, that's because he's a dumbass. <laughs> I twisted his arm even further. Answer the question or the arm's coming off, my dude. Like, ser seriously. Uh, that looks like it must really hurt. Maybe you should hurry up and answer my question? Bastard! Mayu is... like a sister to me. We've always been together. Oh-ho! So that pasta dad girl's name is Mayu then? Mayu is... not dead. Huh? Mayu is not dead. She's not! <laughs> What's so funny? What's so funny? <laughs> Are you? <laughs> Are you honestly telling me that girl smeared on a wall isn't dead? One little stab in the gut is usually enough to take someone out, you know. Life is fragile enough even when it's mostly intact. But that... That's not even recognizably human anymore. 
How exactly is she not dead? Bailey's alive. I know she is. Sig. Yep, see? She's alive. I heard her from my phone. I heard Mayu's voice. She's alive. Look, she's right there. Are you telling me that bag? <laughs> I just couldn't find her hairpin. So for that, I'm very grateful. Now, let go. Let go of me. Currently attempting to ignore the pain in his arm, Morishi bent and contorted his body until I could no longer hold on to him. Eventually showing me out of his way. Huh? Blood streamed out from the spot on Morrissey's cheek where I'd held a knife. It must have dug into his skin a bit during the struggle. With much effort, he stumbled his way over to where Mayu's hairpin had landed. Shig! Now I have all of you. Shig! That's enough! That's enough! I finally found your hairpin. The one you were always wearing. This is absurd! You're just placating yourself. Deluding yourself. Huh? All you have is a clump of meat you found in the hallway. Did this Mayu ask you to gather her up into a bag? Was that truly what she wanted from you? <laughs> Be quiet! You don't understand. It's just your demented little way of soliciting forgiveness. You weren't able to protect her. So now you're desperately trying to atone for that. Shut your filthy mouth! You weren't there for her in the time of need. You basically just let her die. <laughs> Morishig was trying to look strong and in control up till now. But his cracks were starting to show. They always do after a time. She probably hates you for it. You are after all. The man who failed to save her from a gruesome demise. <gasps> well, I mean exactly what exactly could Morishig do? Like... He, she was being suspended in the air by uh, two ghost children and was chucked full speed into a wall. If Ayumi and Yoshiki couldn't do anything, what could he do? <clears throat> I don't feel that way at all. I ran into some ghostly children just before coming here. And they were saying some rather hostile things. If their grudges were any indication, then this Mayu is likely standing next to you right now. Telling you to hurry up and die already. No, that's not true, Shig! You're right. You have to be. I couldn't protect her. I let my precious... Precious Mayu die. It's not your fault! It, it's not your fault! It... It was all me! I was the one who felt bad for those children and let myself get trapped by them. I was so lonely. So very lonely. I just needed someone to talk to. I shouldn't listen to Shinozaki and Kishinoma. I would have been happy if I'd just been able to see you one last time though. She meant so much to you. And yet, you allowed her to die? All alone? From this point on, you need to live with that guilt of that failure until the day you die. Or you can atone for your sins and take your own life. In which case, I believe I can be of assistance. Stop! St Mayu! I... I want she to live! Don't speak for me, you awful man! You don't know how I feel! Mayu... I... I loved you, you know? I was always too embarrassed to say it, but... If I'd known this is how things would end... I would've... Mayu... That's why... I don't want you to wind up like I did, okay? <sighs> Morishi stared at my knife for a time... Then reached out and grabbed it. Oh no... Don't do it, Shig! I'm sorry I couldn't protect you. I love you. Oh dear. Shig! And just like that, he stabbed himself in the chest. With that little strength he had remaining, he then pulled a knife from his body. Blood poured from his wound, staining the area around him a deep crimson. Oh god. Well, that's what happened to Morris Sieg. So he did take his own life, but not the way I anticipated. Like, I thought he just sort of threw himself into the void. Ah! Ah, please, no, 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 no! <coughs> May you... Let's... Be... To get... Her... What you gotta say, you sick freak? 
Morrisseek fell to the floor, his eyes still wide open once he stopped withering. I slowly walked over to his body. I then removed my knife from his hand and shook the blood from its blade. Death is what divides humans. It returns us all to nothing. It can either bring us eternal peace or eternal suffering. I'm glad this could come in handy. So tragic, yet so beautiful was the melancholic Watts. We dance here today, Morrisig. Oh shit! And that's the end of Extra Chapter 1! Okay, I got a few things I gotta say. Uh, first off, I feel bad for Mayu just, you know, having to watch him die and not being, like, able to stop this from happening. Having to listen to, uh, uh, Kazami's lies. Second off, I do kind of miss, like, the style that the rest of Blood Drive was with the 3D models. Like, uh, this extra chapter was pretty much, uh, Book of Shadows all over again. I'm hoping not all the extra chapters will be like that, but if they are, I guess I'll be okay with it. And, well, now we know what happened to Morrisig, although I do want to know how we got into, like, the, the gym, you know, when a gym didn't exist when they originally went to Heavenly Host. Alright, and that's the end of Extra Chapter 1, but since we've been going for 40 minutes, I think we're going to stop here for today, alright? So, thank you, everybody, for joining me coming back to Courts Party Blood Drive. Hope you guys are enjoying this, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a nice day. Bye, everybody.